fortunate that I have a principal who is very marketing oriented who understands the necessity to sell the school in new and exciting ways. So she gives me carte blanche to try new ideas and embrace new methods and, as they arise, and arise they do frequently. When I developed a new website for the school, I had nothing but encouragement. When I bravely took us into the world of social networking, Facebook and Twitter, they were right behind me. When I wanted to introduce a principal's blog, there was a little kicking and screaming from Suzanne, but she did it, and now she gets read by people all over the world. And, and we measure that because the, the blog is set up with Google Analytics, and I'm sure some of you have trialed Google, Google Analytics. It's a free service by Google. You just put some code on the bottom of your page, and you can tell exactly who's looking at your page, where they come from, more importantly, how long they stay on your site, uh, and whereabouts in the site they go to. They just look at the front page, or they're weaving their way through your, the maze of your website. And, and, and I spend a lot of time online, and some websites are amazed. Um, the other day I was on a website looking for a telephone number for a school, and you know, I spent 20 minutes I couldn't find it. And I was thinking, what if I wanted to enroll at this school? How do I find who do I call? Communicating with a parent community can be tricky. Where once we're criticised for not enough communication, we are also being criticised for too much communication. You can't win, but parents are our major stakeholders and we listen. We started out with a printed newsletter. Over the years it got bigger and bigger until it rivaled one of the major newspapers. It was expensive to produce and we mailed it out to all parents. We were then criticised for spending too much on postage and for the waste of resources. When I took over as Director of Marketing four years ago, we changed to an online version. The newsletter was still huge and colourful, but we hosted on our web server and sent an email home to let parents know it was available for download. We still print material, obviously we need prospectuses and we need magazines and all those sorts of things, and in some respects that will probably never change. But we're now putting more and more things online for people to access at their leisure and at no cost to us. Uh, one of the big things I want to try next year, and I've been a bit slow to doing, is actually putting out prospectus on the website so you can go through one of those page turning software so it looks like you're reading a book. The marketing department here is a, market, a department of two. Myself and a graphic designer who does amazing works with our advertising, our corporate literature, signage, invitations, anything. We send nothing outside to, be, to design. We are to all intents and purposes our own advertising agency. We're very fortunate to be able to do that. I got a girl straight from university, in fact she's still studying um, to do another course. Our legendary website was developed and designed in-house by myself at a huge saving and now receives over 100,000 hits a year. It's updated hourly, if, if I haven't used it for long, sometimes. I rarely go over a day without putting something new on the website because I think it's so important to keep it fresh. Uh, if you ever looked at our website, every, every time you go back to the main page, that banner which says, I'm not a school student, that will change. So you get a fresh picture every time you go to that page. But there are lots of little backyard companies, probably with a couple of meters about where your school is, so talk to them and you may find someone who's willing to design you a great website at a fraction of the cost that you go to the big people. We had quotes ranging from you know, $1,500 to $40,000 to do a website. And from what I've told, talked to a lot of people, that's famous when you get a website, but it's not always easy to maintain or to update. If you wanted a new graphic, you have to go through and pay a new, new fee to get that done. And I've recently developed an iPhone-specific site so our parents or prospective parents can find out about the school when they're out and about. There are contact numbers, the facility to email any staff member, the term dates and more. This is a school where no is not an option. We believe in giving things a try. We make mistakes, lots of them, but we, we learn and we go on. Email is probably the most popular and easiest method of communicating with parents. I maintain current list of all year level sub schools in the whole school community so I can really fire off an email at a moment's notice. Quite often the sub school will ask me for a message to send to all year five parents and I can do I have that information ready to go. But emails still have their own problems, parents don't always check them on a regular basis, so messages can still go astray. We send two types of emails. One is the call to action email, the plain one, plain text one, straight to the point with urgent news. It's perfect for letters from the health centre or the head of school or to say, quick, don't forget this, you've got to get your forms back by tomorrow. The second one we send is an HTML email, which is a little bit more fancy. These are the things you probably have in your inbox and your email every single day. Um, they're basically a tiny little web page that gets downloaded to your email box. The best way to get messages that need uh, immediate attention is SMS. Everyone has their phone with them and we get messages to them straight away and have a response within minutes. To do this we use a company called SMS Broadcast. Uh, it's an Australian based
SMS-based company. Uh, there are quite a few SMS uh, companies around there on site, and they all work a similar way. So sending one SMS or hundreds of SMSs is very easy. You simply log in, paste your message in a box, paste in, uh, or copy and paste the list of your mobile numbers, which I get from our database, and I have that all once again ready to go. You type one message and you send it. Very simple, very quick. Um, we use SMS as a call to action. Uh, seats are available tonight, it's information night, raffle tickets are back tomorrow, the bus camp is running, the, 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 camp, the bus from camp is running late. Um, our middle and sub schools are using the SMS now to contact parents when a student is late or absent. We used to have to phone every parent and sometimes leave messages and it took ages to find out where their child was. Now we send one SMS and we get them to phone us. Much simpler, much more efficient. There are lots of other ways you can communicate in this ever, ever hastening digital age. We do all our parent satisfaction surveys online. We use a website company called eSurveys Pro. But once again, there are a lot more out there. SurveyMonkey is an obvious one which a lot of people know about. On our website, we incorporate booking forms for school tours, prospectus requests, or anything else we might think of. This saves a lot of calls to our registrar and frees up more time. And when you run as leanly as we do, and as most schools do these days, staff-wise, then every minute and every person counts. This year we incorporated a payment module into our website so parents can pay fees online or pay for major events like year 12 form tickets. It wasn't cheap to set up but it's secure and slowly gaining in popularity with the parents. I wanted to set up the principal's blog to show a different aspect of the school. I wanted there to be a human face as opposed to the polished spin that appears in the prospectus or official marketing material. The blog is externally hosted by a site called EduBlogs. I, as the webmaster of the school, hold all access passwords to these sites and entries are sent to me uh, rather than let everyone else have access to them because we have to be very careful what goes up there, obviously. It's sometimes time consuming, but it's something I enjoy doing. A lot of schools are nervous about entering into the frightening world of social networking. A 2010 survey showed that schools have almost no presence in the social media space. Most principals are against it because they either don't understand it or don't want the extra work. In fact, their responses were, what am I going to get out of it? Isn't it more, more work for me? And where do I start? Many are frightened they'll open up a can of worms and invite all sorts of derogatory comments from disgruntled parents or from those with too much time on their hands. And I must admit that can happen, but we haven't had any of that today. The Facebook and Twitter sites are easy to set up and need to be maintained regularly so people can see there are new things happening around the school. I update them as many times as they can and include a few pictures from time to time, all the time being cautious not to include photos of students. Putting something new on Facebook is a surefire way of getting word out quickly and to keep in touch with alumni, for instance. Last year we were staging a music production and ticket sales for the matinee were low. I put news of it on Facebook on Saturday morning and by the one o'clock matinee we had 100 alumni come who wouldn't otherwise hear about it. Uh, we do the similar sort of thing. Twitter, as you probably know, is limited to 140 characters, so you have to be very sort of type with what you write and use abbreviations and all those sorts of things. There are always new things happening in the digital world and it's worth exploring. Next year we're putting together parent-teacher interviews bookings online and we'll save a lot of time and once again we'll save a lot of manpower. There may be more social networking avenues open up. Email apparently is dying, they tell me, and people are preferring other ways to communicate. Whatever happens, we'll be there trying them out and finding the best way for us.